There is a great deal of confusion about what happens after death. Some believe that after death, everyone sleeps until the final judgment, at which point they are either sent to heaven or hell. Others believe that when people die, they are instantly judged and sent to their eternal destinations. Others believe that when people die, their souls or spirits are transferred to a temporary heaven or hell to await the final resurrection, final judgment, and the certainty of their eternal destination. So, what does the Bible say about what happens after death? First, the Bible tells us that after death, believers' souls or spirits are taken to heaven because their sins have been forgiven by accepting Christ as Savior. John 3 verses 16 to 18, King James Version. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 3 verse 36, King James Version. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. For believers, death is to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5 verses 6 to 8, Amp. So then, being always filled with good courage and confident hope, and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. We are, as I was saying, of good courage and confident hope and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Philippians 1 verse 23 But I am hard pressed between the two. I have the desire to leave this world and be with Christ, for that is far, far better. However, in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 50 to 54 and 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 17, believers are described as being resurrected and given glorified bodies. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 50 to 54, AMP. Now I say this, believers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit nor be part of the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable mortal inherit the imperishable immortal. Listen very carefully. I tell you a mystery, a secret truth decreed by God and previously hidden, but now revealed. We will not all sleep in death, but we will all be completely changed, wondrously transformed, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet call. For a trumpet will sound, and the dead who believed in Christ will be raised imperishable, and we will be completely changed wondrously transformed. For this perishable part of us must put on the imperishable nature, and this mortal part of us that is capable of dying must put on immortality which is freedom from death. And when this perishable puts on the imperishable, and this mortal puts on immortality, then the scripture will be fulfilled that says, Death is swallowed up in victory, vanquished forever. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 17, AMP. Now we do not want you to be uninformed, believers, about those who are asleep in death, so that you will not grieve for them as the others who do have no hope beyond this present life. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, as in fact he did, even so God, in this same way, by raising them from the dead, will bring him those believers who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For we say this to you by the Lord's own word, that we who are still alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will in no way precede into his presence those believers who have fallen asleep in death. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command, with the voice of the archangel and with the blast of the trumpet of God, and the death in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain on the earth will simultaneously be caught up or raptured together with them 
the resurrected ones, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Believers will have this reunited and glorified body, soul, spirit for all eternity in the new heavens and new earth. Revelation 21 verses 1 to 22, AMP Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away or vanished, and there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, arrayed like a bride adorned for her husband. And then I heard a loud voice from the throne, saying, See, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will live among them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be death. There will no longer be sorrow and anguish, or crying, or pain. For the former order of things has passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write, for these words are faithful and true. They are accurate, incorruptible, and trustworthy. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the one who thirsts I will give water from the fountain of life without cost. He who overcomes the world by adhering faithfully to Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowards and unbelieving and abominable, who are devoid of character and personal integrity, and practice or tolerate immorality, and murderers and sorcerers with intoxicating drugs, and idolaters and occultists, who practice and teach false religions, and all the liars who knowingly deceive and twist truth, their part will be in the lake that blazes with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven final plagues came and spoke with me, saying, Come here, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a vast and lofty mountain, and showed me the holy, sanctified city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, having God's glory filled with his radiant light. The brilliance of it resembled a rare and very precious jewel like jasper, shining and clear as crystal. It had a massive and high wall with twelve large gates, and at the gates were stationed twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were written. On the east side there were three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundation stones, and on them the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb, Christ. The one who was speaking with me had a gold measuring rod to measure the city, and its gates, and its wall. The city is laid out as a square, its length being the same as its width. And he measured the city with his rod, twelve thousand stadia, about fourteen hundred miles. Its length and width and height are equal. He measured its wall also, a hundred forty-four cubits, about two hundred feet, according to man's measurements, which are also angelic measurements. The wall was built of jasper, and the city was pure gold, transparent like clear crystal. The foundation stones of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation stone was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, yellow topaz, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, the twelfth amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each separate gate was of one single pearl. And the street, Broadway of the city, was pure gold like transparent crystal. I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty, the Omnipotent, the Ruler of all, and the Lamb are its temple. Second, death means eternal punishment for those who do not accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Unbelievers, like believers, 
appear to be sent immediately to a temporary holding place to await their final resurrection, judgment, and eternal destiny. In Luke 16, a rich man is tormented immediately after death. Luke 16, verses 19 to 31. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. According to Revelation 20, verses 11 to 15, all the unbelieving dead are resurrected, judged at the great white throne, and then cast into the lake of fire. Unbelievers will ultimately be sent to the lake of fire. Revelation 20, verses 11 to 15, AMP. And I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away. And no place was found for them, for this heaven and earth are passing away. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done as written in the books, that is, everything done while on earth. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades, the realm of the dead, surrendered the dead who were in them, and they were judged and sentenced, every one according to their deeds. Then death and Hades, the realm of the dead, were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire, the eternal separation from God. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was hurled into the lake of fire. These are all people's final eternal destinations, based entirely on whether or not they trusted Jesus Christ alone for salvation. Matthew 25, verse 46, Amplified Bible. Then these unbelieving people will go away into eternal, unending punishment. But those who are righteous and in right standing with God will go, by His remarkable grace, into eternal, unending life. John 3, verse 36. He who believes and trusts in the Son and accepts Him as Savior has eternal life, that is, already possesses it. But he who does not believe the Son and chooses to reject Him, disobeying Him and denying Him as Savior, will not see eternal life, but instead the wrath of God hangs over him continually.